Hello friends, my name is Ellipse and today I'm showing you my new creation, my levitating potion brewer. If you come down here, you'll see this is where the, the ingredients for the potions get levitated and this is where they finish up. Now we can choose our options. We're going to make a water breathing potion. I want it to be long, it doesn't need to be splash or inverted. So across to where the puff fish are, which is the key ingredient in the water breeding potion, and I'll put it in my cauldron. And it rises with the bottles and the redstone, which makes it longer. Oh, and you just caught at the end there, the nether wart. Now that's going to brew and then appear right here. Let's see how it does it. To go behind the scenes, we'll go upstairs where the magic is happening and the potion is being brewed in this brewing stand. First we have the nether wart, then the puffer fish, and you'll see the redstone is waiting there. When that finally goes through, this will send a signal, releasing the, water, uh, the new potions, and they'll come down through and drop down onto the stand, the brewing stand. So it will come here. There we go, our potions of water breathing. Let's check it out in creative. So here we have the levitating potion brewer. Um, all these are the essential blocks for this layer. You can tell that this is not meant to be compact, nor is it the most automatic and efficient, but it is mostly designed to have the cool levitating potions effect. So let's just walk through it. First of all, we put our main ingredient into this cauldron. Um, that ingredient comes down into this dropper. The dropper has a comparator behind it, which detects it and sends a signal to the block, which shoots the item back out. So that's gonna go down here and float up through these blocks. At the same time, a signal is detected here. It goes around and triggers off the ingredients. Now, as you'll be able to see over here, we have um, either one of these selected and that's simply done by using a redstone torch here to invert the signal so either one will be on or the other one will be on um, we can put the splash on and off and we can invert it over there Let's this one's down and put that now up so those three those four possible four can be uh, activated by the redstone and then the signal continues keeps going through here, continues and breaks off into two. I don't know where that experience came from. Um, it goes here to the nether wart and this is delayed so that it's the last ingredient that goes into the mechanism. It goes over here to the water bottle dispensers and you can see we have a way of filling them in. Whoa. Uh, there we go. All right, so the water bottles can be filled automatically over here. You just drop the water bottles in here. They go around and stack and fill down there. Uh, so once the, all the ingredients have come up, they arise through these solid glass blocks, through these solid uh, andesite, what are these called? Yep, andesite blocks. And then they go down these streams. Now, the water bottle ones go to these ones over here, so they go up this side, other ingredients go over here, they go up this side, and they're caught by their respective water streams. This takes sends them into a uh, brewing stand, see over there? Now, at the moment, there's no bottles in there, there is one nether wart, and there's nothing in here. So, because this has a total of 22 blocks, this sends out a uh, power signal of one, not two, but when any ingredients come in, it sings out, sends out a power of two, which locks this hopper. And then when the water bottles come, and, um, they will be brewed. Then finally, when the last um, ingredient in the potion goes through, the nether wart comes through. And that will stay there because it can't get sucked into, uh, sorry, that will come down into here with the completed potions, leaving this empty again. And that will reduce the signal, unlocking this, and the potions will come down this water stream into that hopper and into this potion stand. Okay, let's try it out in survival so we can get our rabbit's foot here. Let's first show how to fill up the water potions. 
So you just click on them, filling up the water potions, and they get sent up through our collection into the containers, uh, the chests and hoppers. Um, and then we can put our potion in, our potion ingredient. We're going to make a strong splash potion of leaping. So strong means it'll be a second potion. So the items go up and lastly, we should have the nether wart. There you go. So that's going to fill in through there and come down here. Now, as you can see, I've only included the essential blocks. Uh, once you build this yourself, you'll be able to decorate it however you want. Put a floor in around here, put some walls, all those things. Now, the important features of this are that this is one solid um, rectangular prism of glass and stone. So the items, when they get into this section, will float up without any pockets to go by. Um, the order that they go in, this why we have the timing of Willis Redstone is kind of important too. You want um, the glass bottles full of water not to be the first items. Um, they can be anything other than first and the nether wart has to be last um, for the reasons I said before. So it's brewing away up there. As I said, not the most compact or the most automatic but I really do love that effect of the items just floating up and then the potions just appearing to your, to your left over there. So if we change the game mode back into creative, you can see the wiring that I've done to get to, um, to get the pistons to be able to activate these ingredients. Okay, the potions arrived, let's just check. All there, all good. And there you have it.